in today's lecture i will discuss i will discuss solution to some specific problems from chapter number 3 of the textbook of mechanics of materials the topic is on torsion and the problems i have selected for this lecture the first problem is uh, problem number 3.5 from the exercise of the book the statement is in part a for the for the 3 inch diameter solid cylinder and loading shown determine the maximum shearing stress so this diagram is for part a diameter is 3 inches and torque is 40 kilo pounds inch we have to find maximum shear stress this is very easy we can find maximum shearing stress from p c over j where t is torque c is radius outer radius and j is polar moment of inertia so c and t are given j can be found using radius part b is to determine the inter, the inner diameter of the 4 inch diameter uh, hollow cylinder shown this is for part b the outer diameter is given it is 4 inches and the inner diameter is required to be calculated which is unknown for which the maximum stress in this part is same as part a so in part a we will find term maximum the same term maximum will be used for part b and torque is again the same first we have to find term maximum for part number a so for part a diameter is 3 inches so it means radius which is denoted with small uh, c in this chapter it is 1.5 inches so we will move towards the solution radius for part a radius is 1.5 inches or i must write it as half of the diameter 1.5 inches torque is given it is 40 kilo pounds inches okay Tau maximum is equal to torque to C divided by J. Further, we can write it T C J is pi by two radius power four. So it can be summarized as two T divided by pi C Q. This C can be cancelled with this one. we know the torque we know the value of c by putting the values of torque and c we can find tau maximum in part a which comes out to be uh, if we write here as 2 into 40 kilo pounds inch means 10 power 3 40 into 10 power 3 pounds inch pi into radius is in inches 1.5 cube So term maximum after simplification it becomes seven point five four five one ksi. This seven point five one five four five four five one into ten power three psi are seven point five four five one ksi. Remember uh, about psi and ksi. They are the unit of same quantity stress, but k means kilo. Uh, KSI means kilo pounds per square inch. Okay, for part B, we already know that tau maximum is the same as part A. Uh, what we need to find is we need to find the internal radius. External radius is known. Outer radius is four inches divided by two. Two inches. Outer diameter is given four inches. Outer radius is two inches. Tor uh, torque is same. Tor maximum has been already calculated in part A. We know that tor maximum is equal to T C outer divided by J. In this case, we have C outer and C inner. 
so we have to write like this okay now we will put the values here the maximum is 7.5451 into 10 power 3 torque is given it is 40 kilo pounds 14 to 10 power 3 pounds inches c naught is given it is 2 j is unknown we can find j from here j will be 10.6029 inch power 4 we actually do not need to find j we need to find inner radius but we know that j is equal to pi by 2 outer radius power 4 minus inner radius power 4 outer radius is known j has been calculated already so we can find inner radius c i so by putting values in this expression j is 10.6029 inch power 4 pi by 2 c outer is 2 2 power 4 minus c inner is unknown we have to find c inner from this expression and after simplification you can find c inner as 1.74395 inches this is internal radius it was required in the problem now if we want to find internal diameter because in the statement we were asked to find inner diameter so inner radius is known inner diameter will be 2 times inner radius so it will be 2 times the value of ci it becomes 3.4879 inches what we have done we have simply calculated tau maximum in part a from this simple expression of t c over j where t is torque c is radius outer radius and j is moment of inertia other moment of inertia for, for part a we knew c and it is a solid cylinder so j can be calculated as pi by 2 c power 4 so tau maximum has been calculated in part 1 for part 2 the, it is given that tau maximum is same as part a outer radius is given so we have we have to find inner radius first we found j from the expression of j we can find inner radius because outer radius is known from inner radius we can find inner diameter okay we will move towards our next problem the next problem is problem number 3.15 problem number 3.15 from the exercise the statement is the allowable shearing stress is 15 ksi in the 1.5 inch diameter steel rod ab and 8 ksi in the 1.8 inch diameter brass rod bc so the steel rod has a diameter of 1.5 inches and the brass rod has a diameter of 1.8 inches term maximum for this rod is 15 ksi and term maximum for this rod is allowable it is 8 ksi allowable is actually maximum neglecting the effect of stress concentrations so we do not need to take care about stress concentration determine usually stress concentration occurs uh, at the sharp edges we have discussed it in chapter number two so we will not consider that fact determine the largest torque t that can be applied at a so we have to find this torque t t will be different for the steel rod after calculations and it will be different for the brass rod and then we have to choose the smaller value among them so we have to find t for both the rods and then define which one is the allowable one question number three point one five. <clears throat> First, we have to find torque for rod AB. We know that tau maximum is equal to T C over J. So T is equal to tau max J over C. 
okay for steel rod or we can write it here uh, j is actually since both the rods are solid so we can simply derive a expression for t in terms of radius and to maximum only for solid cylinders j is pi by 2 radius power 4 so we can simplify it as t is equal to torque is equal to pi by 2 to max c cube okay for steel rod for steel part t is equal to pi by 2 term max for the steel is 15 ksi and radius for steel is 1.5 by 2 15 ksi is 15 into 10 power 3 psi and radius is half of the diameter so we can find t from here it will be 9.94 into 10 power 3 pound inch or 9.94 kilo pounds inch kip is for kilo pounds okay now for the brass rod the other one is brass rod bc for brass rod t again the expression is same pi by 2 tau maximum c cube pi by 2 tau maximum for brass is 8 ksi and c is half of 1.8 inches 8 ksi is 8 into 10 power 3 psi and 1.8 inches divided by 2 diameter divided by 2 is radius cube t becomes 9.16 into 10 power 3 pound inches are 9.16 kilo pound inches so here we have two values of torque 9.94 and 9.16 the smaller is the allowable value if we will apply the greater one the, the one this one this rod may fail the brass rod may fail but if we apply the smaller value 9.16 both the brass rod and the steel rod will be safe because the steel rod can withstand up to 9.94 kilo pound inches brass rod can withstand up to 9.16 kilo pounds inches so this smaller value uh, and both the rods will be safe at this smaller value so allowable allowable value of torque is allowable torque t is the smaller value 9.16 kilo pound inch okay now we will move towards our next problem which I have chosen for this lecture is problem number 3 to 5 from the exercise. The two solid shafts are connected by gears as shown and are made of a steel for which the allowable shearing stress is 7000 psi. So term maximum is given 7000 psi <coughs> for both rods BC and EF this is BC and this is EF okay this BC is connected to gear A and EF is connected to gear D knowing that the diameters of the two shafts are respectively 1.6 inch diameter of BC this one and 1.25 for diameter EF determine the largest torque TC that can be can be applied at C first we can find torque from this expression 
which we have already discussed in previous problems. So we can find individual torques for rod C and rod, uh, rod BC and rod EF. Then there is another torque which is applied by the <coughs> shaft EF on the rod BC due to this gear connection. There is a gear uh, assembly here. In the subject of machine design, you will study that TA divided by TD or I, definitely I will write here like TC divided by TF TC is in this shaft uh, BC due to this uh, uh, gear A and TF is in rod EF they will be equal to radius of shaft BC divided by radius of shaft yeah. Okay. Or make we can say uh, radius of the gears. Actually, not the shafts. Radius of the gears. Radius of gear A divided by radius of gear D. Because gear A is connected to shaft PC, which is under torque TC, and uh, gear D is uh, under torque. TF which is connected to uh, rod EF. Remember that this expression torque C divided by torque F R R R D. This expression you will study about it in uh, your subject of machine design. Here you can use it directly. Ratio of two torques will be equal to ratio of their corresponding gear diameters. So gear A is connected to this shaft which is under torque C. Gear D is connected to this shaft which is under torque tf okay we will move towards the solution problem number 3.25 the maximum is given which is 7000 psi okay for shaft bc which is under torque tc radius is given as half of the diameter and diameter of the shaft BC was given as 1.6 so radius of shaft BC is 0 0.8 inches remember that you do not need to get confused into diameter of shaft and diameter of gear diameter of shaft is a different diameter diameter of gear is different in the, in the formula of shear stress under torsion we need to use radius of shaft in equation of gear trends and uh, uh, gear assembly, we have to use uh, radius of gears. So now we are calculating shear stress in the shaft, so we have to use diameter or radius of shaft only. Okay, for shaft TC, shaft BC under torque TC is equal to the maximum J divided by C. Okay, again J is equal to pi by 2 c power 4 and this is c so tc is equal to tau maximum pi by 2 tau maximum to c cube tc becomes pi by 2 tau maximum is 7000 psi and radius of rod bc is 0 0.8 which we have calculated earlier this one okay so torque c becomes 5.63 into 10 power 3 pound inches this tc has been calculated from the equation of stress shear stress now we have to find tf in shaft ef shaft EF we know that diameter of shaft EF uh, sorry radius of shaft EF is equal to half of the diameter of shaft EF diameter is 1.25 so radius will be 0 0.625 inches okay TF again it will be pi by 2 tau maximum 
into radius of shaft EF. So radius of shaft EF is known to us. Tau maximum is same for both shafts, 7000 psi. Radius of shaft EF is given. It is 0 0.625 inches. So TF becomes 2.684 <coughs> into 10 power 3 pound inches. We have found torque in shaft EF and torque in shaft BC using equations of stresses. Now the, the, the shaft EF is also applying a torque on the shaft BC due to the gear connection. Now we will find that torque also. Torque transferred from <coughs> Uh, shaft EF to shaft BC okay so it is TC over TF equal to radius of gear A divided by radius of gear D so TC is equal to RA divided by RD into TF let us put the values. Radius of gear A was given as 4 inches. Radius of gear D was given as 0, sorry, 2.5. And TF has been calculated which is 2.684 into 10 power 3. So TC becomes 4.30 into 10 power 3 pound inch. We have found two values of TC. Why we have calculated two values of TC? Because in the problem we were asked to find value of TC, allowable value of uh, torque TC. We can also find TF from this expression, which is the shaft, uh, which is the torque applied by shaft BC on shaft EF. But actually in the problem we have not been asked to find TF actually. So we have got two values of TC, one from the transfer of shaft transfer of uh, torque from one shaft on the another shaft the other value of TC is from shear stress among these two values one is 5.63 the other one is 4.3 so to be safe we have to uh, choose the smaller value of load only always so the smaller value is 4.3 so allowable torque in rod or shaft BC is TC equal to 4.3 kilo pounds inches this value 4.3 into 10 power 3 pound inch or kilo pound 10 power 3 is kilo pounds uh, 4.3 kilo pounds inches this is allowable remember that uh, in case of loadings, we always have to choose the smaller value as the allowable value. Okay. The next problem which I have chosen for this lecture is problem number 335. The statement is the electric motor exerts a 500 Newton meter torque on aluminum shaft ABCD when it is rotating at a constant speed knowing that 20, uh, G is equal to 27 gigapascal and that the torques exerted on pulley B and C are shown determine the angle of twist between B and C and B and D okay this motor actually exerts a torque of 500 Newton meter definitely because uh, here are two torques at uh, pulley B and pulley C, 200 Newton meter and 300 Newton meter. So they are, they will be balanced by this uh, uh, electric motor by 500 Newton meter torque. Okay. This shaft ABCD is made of a material which has G equal to 27 gigapascal. 
would have to find angle of twist phi between pulley B and C and between pulley B and D. So phi for B D is actually sum of phi B C plus phi C D. And B D is uh, B D consists of two shape, uh, two parts B C and B D. The diameters are different, so areas are different, even the torque is different. So what we have to do first, we have to find individual torques in uh, between B C and C D. How can we do it? We have to section these uh, shapes between BC and between first we have to section it between BC to find tau BC, TBC, torque in BC then between C2 to find torque between C and D. Okay, I will do it here. Problem number 335. To find torque in individual shafts, first I will section the shaft between B and C. This is B. The torque at the pulley B is 200 Newton meter in this direction it is 200 Newton meter so we have sectioned it between B and C this N is actually N A there is no torque between A and B so torque A B is 0 actually okay here is a reaction torque torque B C summation of torques is equal to 0 so torque BC will be equal to 200 Newton meter counterclockwise, clockwise. Sorry. If we see it uh, from the NA, it is clockwise. Okay. The next free body diagram will be between C and D. DC here the torque is two hundred Newton meter and three hundred Newton meter. So between section C and D, there will be a reaction torque TCD and TCD is in upper direc opposite direction to TB and TC. So it will be sum of 200 to 300. Simply you can take summation of torques is equal to 0. Two of them are in one direction and TCD is in the other direction. <coughs> so the sum will be 500 Newton meter. And again it is clockwise when we look at from and a okay now we will solve uh, it one by one length of section BC is given length of BC is 1.2 meters length of CD is 0 0.9 meters diameter of BC is 44 mm diameter of CD is 48 mm so we can uh, find their uh, radius it is uh, radius of BC is equal to 44 by 2 22 mm and radius of CD is 48 by 2 it becomes 24 
so length BC is 1.2 meters and length CD is 0 0.9 meters okay C CD is 22 mm or 0 0.022 meters so J of Sorry, BC. This is BC. J for part uh, rod BC is pi by two CBC power four. So it will be pi by two zero point zero double two power four becomes three sixty seven point nine seven into ten power minus nine meter. So in the three J for <coughs> C for part C D is twenty four mm. It becomes zero point zero two four meters. So J for rod C D it be pi by two zero point zero two four power four. It becomes five twenty one point one five three into 10 power minus 9 meters meter power 4 sorry <coughs> now we have to find uh, for part a we have to find angle of twist in rod bc we have already studied the expression is t in bc length of bc j of bc G of BC. G is constant actually for all of the uh, for the whole shaft ABCD. Okay, torque is known in BC. Length is known. J has been calculated already, and G is known. So we will put the values. Torque BC is 200 newton meter. Length of BC is 1.2 meters. Uh, <coughs> J has been calculated as uh, 367. 0.9710 power minus 9 and g is given in the problem which is 27 into 10 power 9 pascals so we will put the values 200 into 1.2 divided by 367.97 into 10 power minus 9 and g is 27 into 10 power plus 9 so Phi BC can be calculated as 24.157 into 10 power minus 3. Remember that this value will be in radians. If you want to convert it into degrees, you can simply multiply it with 180 divided by pi. 180 degrees by pi radius so phi bc will be 1.384 degrees okay it will be in the direction of the torque torque was in <coughs> clockwise direction when we look at uh, from end a so phi will also be in clockwise direction Okay, <clears throat> from N A. Now we'll we will move towards uh, calculation of phi C D. It is torque in rod C D, length of rod C D divided by J of rod C D and G of C D. G is constant. We will put the values. Torque of C D is five hundred newton meter. Length of C D is zero point nine meters. J is J of C D is 521 into 521.153 into 10 power minus 9 meter power 4. We will put the values 500 into 0 0.9 divided by 
point one five three into ten power minus nine to twenty seven ten power plus nine. So five C T becomes thirty one point nine eight into ten power minus three radians. Again, this five C five C D has not been asked to calculate, but we were asked to find five B D, which is sum of five B C plus five C D. We have already calculated five B C in radians. It is twenty four point one five seven into ten power minus three. Twenty four point one five seven into ten power minus three. Five C D is thirty one point nine eight into ten power minus three. So the sum becomes fifty six point one three seven to ten power minus three radius. We can convert it into uh, degrees. Fifty three point one, fifty six point one three seven into ten power minus three multiplied by one eighty degrees over pi. So five B D angle of twist between shaft B and uh, electric motor D will be three point double two degrees. We have discussed this expression of uh, angle of twist in our theory, which was actually T L over J G, where T is torque, L is length, J is polar moment of inertia, and G is modulus of rigidity. So for a single shaft, B C, it was easy to find because we knew torque in B C, length of B C, J of B C, and G for B C. For a, a series of shafts. B D and B uh, B C and C D we have calculated it separately. Five B C and five C D and then we have added it to find five B D. Okay, we will move further towards our next problem, and hopefully this will be the last for this lecture. <coughs> the aluminium rod A B. It is problem number three point three eight. The aluminium rod A B, for which G modulus of rigidity is twenty seven giga pascal, is bonded to the brass rod uh, B D, for which G is thirty nine giga pascal. So these two rods are from, uh, made of uh, two different materials A B and B D, aluminium and brass. Knowing that portion C D of the brass rod is hollow and has an inner diameter of for forty millimeters, this portion between C and D you can see it is dotted. It is hollow from inside. So this brass rod is actually solid between B and C and then hollow between C and D. The hollow section has an uh, outer diameter of sixty mm, but inner diameter is unknown. Determine the angle. Uh, sorry, inner diameter is known. It is a forty mm. Determine the angle of twist at A. We have to find phi at A. Definitely, phi A is actually equal to phi A D, which will be will be sum of phi A B plus phi B D. And phi B D is further sum of. Uh, okay, I will write it like. Because B D is a uh, portion B D is sum of portion B C and portion C D. I will write it as phi A B plus phi B C plus phi C D. B D is a single B D is a single shaft uh, made of single uh, material brass. But the diameters are different. Uh, cross sections are different between B C and C D. So we have different uh, uh, different uh, different angle of twist between them. Okay. 
I will move towards the solution. First, we have to find, again, we will use the expression for phi, which is T L over J G. We have to find T torque for different sections A, B, B, C, and C, D. Similarly, length for A, B, B, C, and C, D, they are given 400 mm, 375 mm, and 250 mm. J for each section will be calculated because radius of each section is known. And G for each section is different. For AB it is 27 gigapascal, for BC and CD it is 39 gigapascal. <clears throat> I will move towards the solution. Okay, between AB, A and B, we have to actually uh, section this shaft first between AB because torque has changed and even area has changed at point B then between B and C because material has changed and then between C and D because area will change diameter has changed so we have three sections first I will section it between A and B between A and B we have sectioned the shaft is a torque of 800 Newton meter. This is point A. Here will be torque AB. Problem number 338. So summation of torques is equal to 0. So torque AB is equal to 800 Newton meter. It will be clockwise if we look at it from end A. Again, uh, we have to section the shaft between B and C. A, B, and before C, we have to section it. A, B. At A, there's a torque of 800 Newton meters. At B, there's a torque of 1600 Newton meters, both in the same direction. So here will be a torque TBC. TBC will be sum of these two torques because TBC is in opposite direction, opposite direction, and the two given torques are in the same direction. So 800 plus 1600, it will be 2500. Sorry, 2400. <coughs> Newton meter torque. And again, this is clockwise if you look at it from end A. The next section will be between C and D. The part between C and D is actually hollow. A, B, and C. At A, there is a shaft, there is a torque of 800 Newton meter. At B, there is a torque of 1600 Newton meter. There is no torque at C, given at C. So torque CD, again it will be same as torque BC. Sum of 800 Newton meter and 1600 Newton meter, which becomes 2400 Newton meters. And it will be clockwise if we look at it from and A. So we have found torques in each section AB, BC and CD. Okay, length of AB, length of BC and length of CD are known. Length of section AB, it is 400 millimeters or 0 0.4 meter. This is 0 0.375 meters and this is 0 0.25 meters. So we can write it as length of AB is 0 0.4 meters length of BC is 0 0.375 meters and length of CD is 0 0.25 meters J for AB, J for BC and J for CD need uh, to be known J for, ok, first we have to we need to know um, radius for each, for each of the section C for AB, 
this is half of the diameter of AB. Diameter is 36 mm. So C will be mm, 36 divided by 2. 18 mm or 0 0.018 meters. C for CD is half of its diameter. Its outer diameter, uh, its solid diameter is 60 mm. It will be half of 60, 30 mm or 0 0.03 meters. Diameter for uh, portion CD, there are two diameters, inner diameter and outer diameter. So for Sorry, this is BC. For CD, outer diameter is 60 mm, so outer radius is 30 meter, and inner radius is outer diameter. Uh, inner diameter is 40 mm, so inner radius will be 20 mm, 0 0.02 meters. So we can find here. I will write CAB is. 0 0.018 meters CBC is 0 0.03 meters C CD outer is 0 0.03 meters and CCD inner is 0 0.02 meters I will find J for each of the section J A B is pi by two C A B power four pi by two zero point zero one eight power four it becomes one sixty four point eight nine six into ten power minus nine meters. Okay, J for section B C is pi by 2 radius of rod BC power 4 it becomes pi by 2 radius is 0 0.03 so it becomes 1.27234 into 10 power minus 6 meter power 4 Okay. J for section CD. CD portion is actually hollow one, so it will be pi by two. CD outer power four minus CD inner power four. Pi by two. CD outer is zero point zero three, and CD inner is zero point zero two. So it will become. 1.02 1.02 into 10 power minus 6 ok so phi a is actually phi a d between a and d so it is equal to Phi A B plus Phi B C plus Phi C D. Phi A B plus Phi B C plus Phi C D. Or we can write it as T A B length of A B divided by J for A B and G for A B plus T B C length of B C j for bc and g for bc plus tcd length for cd j for cd and g for cd if uh, we, we know all these values some have been, some some were game, given and some have been calculated so tab tbc and tcd have been calculated as 800 newton meters 2400 newton meters and 2400 newton meters LAB, LBC and LCD are also known. JAB, JBC and JCD are also known. GAB, GBC and GCD are given in the problem. This is 
G A B or not A B. This is G B C and G C D because B C and C D both are made from the same material brass twenty seven and thirty nine. Okay, so we will put the values here. T A B was eight hundred newton meter. Eight hundred newton meters. L A B is given as zero point four meters. J A B is one one sixty four point eight nine six into ten power minus nine, and G A B is. Twenty-seven gigapascal. Twenty-seven into ten power nine. Plus <coughs> TBC is twenty-four hundred. Remember that all the torques are in the same direction. TAB, TBC, and TCD. All of them are in clockwise direction when we look at it from an A. If any of the torque is in opposite direction, we have to keep negative sign with it here because it will produce a negative or an opposite twist. So here all of them are. In the same direction, we will keep positive signs. LBC is zero point three seven five. JBC is one point two seven two three four into ten power minus six. And GBC is given as thirty nine into ten power nine gigapascals. Uh, Plus TCD is again twenty four hundred newton meter. LCD is zero point two five divided by JCD is given as has been calculated as one point zero two one zero two into ten power minus six. And GCD is again same as thirty nine into ten power nine. You can do this calculation or the simplification by yourself. I will simply write the final answer here. After simplification, phi A becomes one zero five point zero eight into ten power minus three radians. If you want to convert it into degrees, simply multiply it with one eighty degree over phi. And you can calculate. Uh, you can convert it into degrees. The answer in radians is also radians is also enough. This was required for phi a. We needed to. It is actually between a d a point a and point b. We needed to calculate the angles of uh, twist of each section between point a and d. So between a and d, there were three sections. How do we know that there are three sections? We need to define it on the basis of change in torque, change in J, or change in G. So torque has been changed between A and B. Then material has changed between uh, before A uh, point B and after point B. Uh, even J has been changed because the radius is changed at point B. Then at C, again radius has changed. Internal radius has changed. So either the torque changes or the Polar moment of inertia changes, or the material G changes, we have to create a section. So we found three different uh, angles of twist: phi AB, phi BC, and phi CD. And then the sum of them all will be phi AD or phi phi A. So we have calculated phi A very easily. This was all which I wanted to discuss. in this lecture if there's any problem or any query you want to discuss with me you can send me email uh, and we can discuss it on email as well thank you very much